fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social and Association with houseofboxing.com Empire Fight Store. Eduardinho, we're at Misfits. I can't believe it. How are we, mate? Um, listen, they've, they've, they've got me. I'm sold. I'm invested, right? You know, what do I think of Mitch Fist? I think it's a great brand. I think it does great for the zone. Never really wanted to come to one before. All of a sudden, I've got the train up. I've walked here, I bought my daughter for her birthday. Do you know what I mean? So I'm invested. I think they've done a great job on the promotion. I think the fighters, we can learn a little bit from it. Not just the promotional side, but the fighters as well. The reason this works so well is because there's so many characters in this world and of course they've got big followings as well but you see from the moment the doors open it's busy it's packed the energy builds all night and i'm looking forward to the two main fights i'm just going to quickly ask you for prediction i'm sure we'll get it out just before we don't even know if dylan dennis can box there's photos of him with girls in manchester last night with 20 tequilas on the table logan paul's cut logan paul's bruised how's the fight still going on i don't know well that's the word it's like this is wwe with gloves on so embrace that. Um, I've no idea if Dylan Dennis could even box. I actually spoke to Conor McGregor about it because he knows him. He said, no, he's all right, he's quite hand. Like, is he even going to turn up? I think he's been unbelievable in the promotion. I think it's got a little bit personal at times, too personal, but we're here. But I think Logan Paul, having experienced time in the boxing ring, albeit with KSI and, and with Floyd Mayweather, is the big favorite in that fight. I think Dylan might run out of juice late on in the fight. He might even try and choke Logan Paul out, I honestly wouldn't even be surprised. And in the main fight, I expect Tommy Fury just to be too good at this level for KSI. But I've written him off before, and listen, he's done, like the guy's gone out, he ain't the best singer in the world. He's had a couple of number ones, he's had a, a global music tour. So he's a determined son of a gun, and he's a smart kid, and he's trained hard, and good luck to him. Would it be embarrassing if Tommy Fury lost it? Would be embarrassing, the most embarrassing thing in the world. <laughs> and. Um, I just don't see it happening, you know, I don't, I don't see it happening. What do you make of John Fury's antics this week? So I'm going to quickly run through it. So Wednesday, uh, he turns up, he throws a bottle at KSI's head. Greg Paul comes up to him, says, hello, John Fury. John Fury goes, I'm a machine, tries to fight him. And then Thursday, uh, he spoke through the whole press conference, showed his bum to uh, KSI. Then he wasn't allowed at the weigh-in. John, John, Fury, John Fury should be getting paid this week. He's been absolutely golden. I think we've just started to realise that John Fury is on a constant wind-up, right? He's not actually looking to fight anybody. This is just him. I mean, anyone that puts his, tries to get his fingers under the perspex glass to rip it out. But he's built for this world. Like, he's built for this madness. And I think he's been great. Like, don't, don't take this all too seriously. There's too many people saying, oh, it's a disgrace. We need to do better. <clears throat> if this is doing great numbers, we have to try and create a product with what we love, which is real championship boxing. We all must do better, the fighters must do better, because this is the new world now, you know? And you know, I'm sure it's done great numbers for you this week, you've enjoyed it, you've, you know, we have to step up to the plate. We've got a great schedule coming up, and when there's own banging a million subscribers tonight, we need to try and convert them into the real boxing schedule, which is the next nine weeks. So don't be a hater, don't hate the player, hate the game. That's, that's, this is the game. This is the, the new nouveau world that we live in. All the kids are excited. Oh, they, you know, and that's the audience. That's the future audience. So we are where we are. But you know, don't take it too seriously. It ain't real. It's just they can't fight. But it's just an entertainment. That's all. Edward, the Mail reported at the start of the week that you had agreed terms or the, or the purses or whatever had been agreed for Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. We've pressed and pressed Caller all week. He said the fight definitely won't be announced tonight. We all sort of thought it would be because you're here, Caller's here, Chris is here. Gut feeling, do you think this fight happens on December the 23rd? Gut feeling, 100%. I believe this fight happens on December 23rd. It's not done. I saw the reports this week. And uh, Gareth Davis messaged me on the way out saying, I heard you're announcing it tonight. No, we're not announcing it tonight. We're not announcing it tomorrow. Could we announce it next week? Maybe. Callow wants to make the fight. We want to make the fight. The Zone want to make the fight. Eubank wants to make the fight because it's a load of money. Conor Ben definitely wants to make the fight. So when everybody's on board and up for it, you just hope there's a great chance you can get it over the line. It's not over the line, but I'll be doing everything I can to make that fight for December 23rd.
Anthony Joshua, where are we at with him? There were talks about him maybe fighting towards the back end of the year. Does it look like January is more of a possibility now? Yeah, he wants to fight in December, really. But is there's there a any lot... time. Yeah, maybe, but you know, it could spill over into uh, January. But I think realistically, you know, December, January will be the date for his next fight, and then I think he'll fight Deontay Wilder, or he'll fight for the IBF World Heavyweight Title. Um, he wants to become World Heavyweight Champion. He wants to fight Deontay Wilder. He wants to fight Tyson Fury. But he also wants to stay active, and that's what he's asked me to do, is try and get him back in the ring as soon as possible. Eddie, just lastly from me, Liverpool next week, Catra yeah. Lenaro, there's a little update on ticket sales, I'm hearing that they're flying. Yeah. Looking forward to that yeah, one? It's good, I think we're going to have over 7,000 in there on a the night, which is, I think, a fantastic effort. It's a good fight, you know, Lenares is a three-division world champion. People say, oh, he's coming off a couple of losses. He's fired up for this, he's rolling the dice on with everything for this fight. It's a great undercard as well. Um, full of ticket sellers, full of 50-50 fights and, and looking forward to the night. So see you in Liverpool, see you in Cancun, see you in Newcastle, Monaco, Los Angeles, Dublin, Belfast, San Francisco, Phoenix and then back to Millennium Stadium for the big one. Sleep when we're dead, Eduardo. There are 106,000 people saying, when are you coming to Sirencester? What's going on, Guy? Sort it's it out. 106,000. The fans. You're TikToking, follow him. Is that what you're up to now, 106? So the other day when you was having your wet dreams about hitting 100,000, it's now, you've added another six. We've added another six. Wow. So are you coming to Siren? There's a lot, there's not much time in the schedule, but Siren is... Pro honestly, probably not. Scandal. At some point. Scandal. At some point I will definitely come to Siren Sester. Man like Eduardo, final message to the people? Just be happy, enjoy yourself. Don't take life too seriously. Enjoy the circus tonight and the real boxing will return next week. Man like Edward, thank you very much.